What do wine sommeliers do? Do they have a bright career in front of them? That's exactly what we're going to answer in this episode of the Zista podcast. Welcome to the Zista podcast where we invite industry leaders and academicians to answer questions that students have within a specific subject area. And joining me today I've got Akash Soni, head sommelier at Massive Restaurants Private Limited. Welcome to the show Akash. Hi, hello. Thanks for making time. We really appreciate you uh you know being here and hosting this session with us. My pleasure. So you know it's it's pretty amazing you know you you've completed your certification from the court of master sommeliers and i believe you were one of the youngest sommeliers in maharashtra and now you have such a really exciting role at massive restaurants i mean as, as a brand you guys own uh, fantastic outlets like papaya cod masala library uh, you know masala bay so many interesting brands within your portfolio i'm sure you've got your hands full <laughs> absolutely I've got all my hands full. Fantastic, fantastic. So many on my plate to eat, though. So many. So many things on my plate. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so let's jump straight into it. You know, let me ask you by, uh, you know, let me ask you this. You know, what inspired you to be a wine sommelier? Uh, honestly speaking, when I was a hotel, like I was a hospitality student, but I was not interested in uh, wines and spirits. like when i was in college but after completing my degree i started working and then uh, i was working in a restaurant called coco okay. and then over there we had a good wine program like we had around 60 70 labels like 7 years back mm-hmm. and like around 60 70 labels we had and uh, i was very curious to know what like what's the story behind each and every label like you know every wine has its own story to say where it comes from its terroir the climatic conditions how it's made and the story behind the producer so i just kept learning through it and then my manager saw like who was there at that time and then he recommended me a wsp which was a wine course absolutely said, yeah, why not give it a shot so i was in that chair so let's do it level 1 would have been mostly theory and then level 2 becomes a little bit more complex and so on and so forth yes so <laughs> level 2 is a thing where you can uh, you start getting the grip on your basics right level 1 is like for any introductory level like if you just want to know about the wine that's it I've been I've been thinking about doing level 1 myself even though I'm just a consumer you know I'm not a sommelier but I think it'll be nice and I think a lot of people uh, you know I think they would benefit so much if they were to do that level 1 program Yeah level 1 is just for everyone it's not for any hospitality student or if you want to pursue your career as a sommelier it is just for your knowledge Correct okay So you know it's it's really interesting you're interested in a particular area you want to dig deeper you dive deeper and you go back into the the history the geography more details about what's behind each label and that's what kind of interested you so that's really interesting so that you said okay this is something i want to kind of pursue professionally but from the time you've started to your existing position as head sommelier at master uh, at massive restaurants that's quite a journey tell us about that you know what has made you successful i think i was just consistent about it like you know um, there was time like before competing like when i wanted to complete my course I, like the, i used to think nothing else like it was in my head all 24/7 and you know uh, when you manifest ki i want to become a sommelier like i used to manifest every day. you you have to you keep telling yourself you know one day i will be a sommelier one day i will become a sommelier and then you know then nothing can stop you and uh, yeah there were a lot of ups and downs in my career why i was unsuccessful in my attempts as well but yeah i just kept it going on i never lost hope i like that so consistency and manifestation i think that's uh, something we can hang on to because the power of manifestation and visual visualization it's so powerful you know I, i think all of us can benefit from that so thanks for bringing that up uh let me ask you akash like in the course of your you know 
interesting career that you've had you must have tasted many wines so let me ask you how do you approach wine tasting if if i'm a beginner how do i taste wine like a pro so firstly there's nothing uh there's no like there's no uh positive way to taste wine like a pro to be honest like like you just have to see in our terms in sommelier term we have five s's so what first is your see second is your smell third is your swirl sip and savor okay so it's everything starts with appearance so like we have to Like you just check the wine, whether it's faulty, is it hazy, is it has sediments in it, and uh, is it a young wine? And all this you can just figure it out by just by the appearance of it. Okay. And then this, and then you smell it, and smelling decodes around eighty percent of the wine. So smelling is a very important factor in the like in approaching a wine tasting. And then after that, you taste it. You take the wine, you swallow it in your mouth, you take a breather, open up in your mouth, and you gargle it, and then you gulp it or spit it. Okay, okay. So looking at the wine itself, you can make out so much, right? And uh, I, I was reading and uh, I was watching an interesting video which actually was saying that just by looking at the label that you find on a bottle, that itself is quite informative, right? Yeah. Every label has its own story. Okay. Can you give me an interesting Every, example of uh, a label that you know you you saw and learned a lot from? Uh, to be honest, like the there are like European country label. If you see any wine mm-hmm. from European country, they don't mention the grape. Part. So they'll always mention the region where it comes from. Okay. So, for example, uh, if I would say if I see a bottle of Louis Jado Poma. Okay. So it will just it will just mention form. There's just formal mention, and by formal we have to figure it out. Yeah, it will be a Pinot Noir, which is a great variety, and then again okay. it's coming from the formal village from Bourgogne region or Burgundy from France, and then the story behind it. Like I would say, uh, there's one label called Carpinet uh, Dogayolo. So okay. on on the label there is a bush. Like uh, it's a wine bush that has different colors, and it means like whatever colors the bush has. Like every leaf is colored in different different colors. So like some are red, some are green, some are like put into color brown. <laughs> so it just shows the flavors of what the wine has inside. So red indicates the flavor of red fruits. Wood indicates that the wine has seen the uh. Oak aging, and then green indicates it has a little bit of hint of pyrazines, like like what we get in wines, like uh, a little bit of that cut grass aroma. Right. Awesome. So it shows how complex that label is. But the wine is you can by just seeing at the label. Okay. Okay. I I can imagine that as a sommelier and now as a head sommelier, you know, uh, you play many roles in your workplace. Could you maybe uh, you know tell us a little bit about the different kind of roles that you play? You see, my day starts from like once I reach a work, it, it's just about the first thing I need is coffee. <laughs> Be active in all the roles. Right, even wine sommeliers need their coffee. <laughs> yeah, a yeah. lot of caffeine all day. Sure. And then uh, yeah, it just begins. My lunch service starts at one o'clock. and then okay. from 1 o'clock we have to be on floor and then uh, after 3:30 when the restaurant gets shut for the lunch operation after the lunch operations then uh, i just have to check all my stock inventory if my wines are proper if everything is ready for the dinner operations then i just give a little brief up to staff as well like staff training is also an important factor right and then uh, yep and then i read some wine book for like half an hour or something and okay and i prepare again for my dinner so it starts at around 7:30 and then it goes on till 10 10:30 okay got it got it so it's a little bit of training the staff a little bit doing little r and d uh, you know curating a wine list for a specific fnb establishment uh, so many different tasks right it's not just about uh, you know just being there at, at lunch service or dinner service but there's 
a lot that happens uh, behind the scenes as i can imagine yes right so uh, you know very often you hear this phrase you know when it comes to pairing food and wine you know that you can pair your white wine with white meat your red wine with red meat but when it comes to indian cuisine and you know you have such amazing restaurants in your fold uh any any uh, you know approach that you follow for pairing wine with indian food maybe you could tell us something about that so indian food talking about indian food our food is lot of spiced right it is heavily spiced and uh, usually the wines which i will pair to go with indian food is like if i if i look at red wines i'll go for a very medium body not much alcoholic like less in alcohol and i would say i'll go for a merlot or a lighter like or a burgundy pinot noir which is a little medium but not that heavy on the alcohol and uh, you know these this is a big basic what i keep in mind while pairing and while preparing the list and if i go for white then i'll try to go for wines which are little off dry like which have little bit of specific sugar in them to to just to cut the spiciness from the food and then yeah it should always go in a harmony i know you like we can do contrast pairing as well but not with uh, indian food it's quite difficult and whenever i'm confused it's just we can go for sparkling or rosé <laughs> they go all time with indian food okay yeah I, I, it's a different challenge when it comes to indian food our food is so rich our food has so many complex flavors you know compared to other yeah. cuisines uh, the, the stuff that we create is got a melange of flavors that are competing for your attention you know <laughs> so in that context the wine uh, should be uh, i guess something which is simpler and something that complements as you said the spicy food that we have yeah. okay i want to ask you a question in terms of uh, students you know so a lot of students are thinking about becoming a wine sommelier uh, what would be you know the advice what's the advice you would give them what are the traits that they need to succeed you know anything that you can say will be really great I would say first thing is the memory. Okay. You know, being a sommelier, you have to you have to keep a lot of things in your mind, and then you know, you only thing is like you have to taste, taste, and taste. You have to taste a lot of wine, and you have to remember what it is. And become a to becoming a sommelier is not like a finality. Like you have to keep learning it throughout your career because, uh, like as they say, the rabbit hole is deep. And then you can never reach the end. So yeah, but like I would say, like stay consistent if you are dedicated. Like you can beat it. Stay like stick to it. Never lose hope. And one day, even you all, like everyone can achieve their dream. Yeah. Right, right. So consistency, having the patience, putting in the hours, putting in the hard work. That's all really important. But in addition to that, you need to have a good memory. So. i think that that's a uh, you know good tips there and uh, in terms of saying staying in touch with the industry are there any specific resources that you read or you know what what could you share on that front so there is nothing i uh, like there are lots and lots of to read on wine but uh, what i usually do is uh, i have my own sources from where i started by cms my wsc i refer to those all the time okay and then if i need to know something more then uh, i rather i rather search for a label like a story behind the label and then and like what to search like i can read about like i try to read about the producers what mm-hmm. they make what are their story and you know that's very helpful and it keep you posted as well like what's going on in the industry other than reading books i'm not saying reading books is a it's not good but yeah we should read books as well but this is also a good way to keep us updated like what's going on in the wine world everything there's a change every time there's a change absolutely uh, i think you know storytelling is such an important part of our uh, you know of us as humans right so every label has a story and the more effort you invest in understanding a little bit more about that story allows you to weave that story in front of a customer relate you know give some more details to the customer which he or she may have not uh, known about and that's so interesting yeah all right um in terms of you know future career prospects and let's this is the last question i'll i'll basically uh, you know want to touch upon 
So in terms of future career prospects, um, do you think that India at the stage where it's at, we do need a lot of qualified wine sommeliers? Do you think a wine sommelier has, uh, you know, good number of jobs to choose from? Uh, you know, any anything you could say on that front? I do think we need a lot of sommeliers. Like uh, when I, when people talk about wine, like most of them they back out because they don't want to put the efforts at what it takes to become a sommelier. They don't want to do the study. Even myself, I didn't want to study, but I did, and eventually I did. And right now we do need. And since the Indian market is like expanding, it's growing in terms of alcohol, in terms of wines. We're getting a lot of lot. New importers, new wines coming in, and uh, yeah, I would say we need people because right now sommelier just does not fit in five star hotels as we used to do before. Right now, sommeliers stand in they need uh, like sommeliers have to be in standalone. There are a lot of retail outlets who look for sommeliers. There are right. companies who look for freelancers and sommeliers. So yeah, now. The opportunity is expanding. Like you're getting more and more different ways to explore, and yeah, it's not just like your old school boring type of job where you used to go to five stars and you know, get sustained at one place. But yeah, there is absolutely growth in becoming a sommelier. That's good to hear, you know. And I think it's going to be very reassuring for a lot of students who may be sitting on the fence thinking should i should i not so what you're sharing right now will help students progress with a lot more certainty and make the right career choice um thank you akash i've really enjoyed talking to you it's been a fantastic session i hope you've enjoyed this uh, conversation and i encourage you to subscribe to our youtube channel if you like what you see we're going to keep creating content like that if you prefer tuning into audio you can catch us on google apple or spotify our handle is the zista podcast till we meet again i'd say stay curious